What's up guys, my name is Bart Komar, and on this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this traditional sliding barn door completely out of plywood, and we distress it to make it look like it's been sitting outside for a couple of years. But the truly cool thing about this door is that it has acoustic panels on the backside that really help out the audio in the shop. And we're also gonna be installing some brush stripping to keep all the dust in the shop and out of the rest of the house. So let's get some materials and let me show you how I did it. Welcome to the Komar Project. Okay, so I decided to make this door out of plywood to keep the cost down and to create a very DIY friendly design that anyone can follow without any joinery or complicated glue ups. For this project, I needed the worst plywood that I could find, and I went with regular sheathing plywood from my local big box store. Two sheets of three quarter inch ply and one sheet of half inch. I want this door to have a very rustic and old look, and all those cracks, knots, and gouges are going to help with that. So the door that I'm building is 53 and a half inches wide, so I need to add five inches to the base sheet of plywood. I'm gonna be doing that with dominoes, but you can do the same thing with biscuits or dowels. Now there's a good chance if you're building a door like this, you're not gonna need to go wider than 48 inches. So you might not even need to do this step. But if you do, you can just take a circular saw with a straight edge. I use a level or a table saw to rip that piece down. And if you don't have a circular saw, you can even use a jigsaw. Just make sure you're using it with a straight edge so you get a nice clean cut. So here I'm screwing in a couple of pieces of three quarter inch plywood and it doesn't matter what size they are. They're just there because I only have two clamps long enough for this glue up and by using those blocks I can use shorter clamps to bring both pieces together while the glue dries. But again, you might not be gluing anything together if your door is less than 48 inches. After testing the frosting of my windows, I cut out the window openings using a combination of a circular saw, jigsaw, and a handsaw. Any of these will work, but I found that the circular saw is much quicker and is more accurate. Then I ripped the three quarter inch sheet into four pieces, each six and a quarter inches wide, the length of the full sheet. These are going to make up the outside frame of the door. Then I reset my saw and ripped the half inch sheet into five inch pieces. These are gonna make up the inside panels of the door. Then I sorted through all the pieces, trying to look for the worst side with the most imperfections, knots, and I pulled out my restorer. Now this is my new tool, it's made by Porter Cable, and I'm gonna be using the wire wheel to distress all of these pieces. Like I said before, I'm going for that rough and aged look, and that wire wheel on this tool absolutely does the trick. You can actually see the grain popping through, and it gives you that grimy, splintered look that I'm looking for. You can achieve the same look with a wire wheel on a grinder like I'm doing here. I guess you could do the same thing with a wire wheel on a drill, but that may take some time. Then I ripped some one and a half inch strips from the leftover half inch plywood and used them to elevate the outside frame pieces of the door. You'll see what I mean in a minute here because it's a little bit difficult to explain. Once those are glued and nailed in, I started putting in the five inch inside panel pieces I cut from the half inch ply. I used plenty of glue and one inch brad nails for this. Next it's time to cut the rabbit for the window openings. And a rabbit is nothing more than a groove for something to fit into. I'm gonna be using a rabbiting bit with a bearing to do this. Now the bearings can be changed for different sizes. And you can basically determine the size of your rabbit by putting in a different size bearing. And I put a bearing in big enough to give me a quarter inch rabbit for this. Then I squared off the corners with a chisel and I was ready for stain. I'm using a product by Verifane and the color is Special Walnut. To apply the stain, I'm using an old rag. And I just splashed generous amounts on the wood and then pushed it around with a rag, making sure that I was not too perfect with the application. And I even left some of the deeper gouges without any of the stain. This gives it that weathered away look and makes it look more authentic. So I guess again, don't be perfect. Next it was time to cut the windows out of a piece of glass that I had, and I bought a tool from my local big box store that came with the world's smallest instructions. Now I don't know if it was me or it was the tool, but I could not get this thing to crack. I tried everything, I tried leaning on it, I tried pounding on it, and then I got the brilliant idea 
Let's score it with a grinder. Why not, right? Yeah, that's why not. Yeah, sometimes you do really stupid things and they don't always work. Now we gotta find another piece of glass like this. Urgh. All right, kids, don't cut glass with a grinder. That was probably one of the dumbest things I've done in a long time. But I ended up getting some plexiglass. It's not frosted, which is a bummer, but I can cut this stuff on the table saw and it's not going to break. Let's do it. After putting my windows in, I can go ahead and place that three quarter inch piece that we ripped to six and a quarter earlier. And I use glue and brad nails to secure it to the door. <laughs> this thing is looking good. Yeah. And the clear glass is growing on me, so I cannot wait to get rid of this echo and these acoustics. So, next, I think, is going to be... Get on the bench! It's on, but it's my fingers! Move your hand. Oh. What do you mean it's not heavy? It's not heavy. But it weighs more than Thor, and that's a lot. <laughs> no, I don't even know how you're going to hang it. It's going to pull the ceiling down. Pretty heavy. So Honey Bunny may think that this door is heavy, but it's about 150 pounds, which for a barn door this size is nothing. Here I'm installing the pine header. Since I'm going to be putting in acoustic panels, I needed to bring this door off the wall a little bit more, and that header is going to give me just the clearance I need. Next I started installing the track kit to the door and to the wall. I needed a rail that was around 9 feet long, and the closest thing that I can find is a 10 foot kit on Amazon for 65 bucks. I'm going to leave a link to it and all the stuff that I use in this video in the description below. Okay, that, that'll work. Push. There you go. Hey! What? <laughs> Maxie, we got a barn door. We got a barn door, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> After Honey Bunny and I installed the door, which was super simple, Thor said there was something missing and wanted an X installed on the actual barn door. So I took the leftover 3 quarter inch plywood, cut out a couple of pieces and made an X shape and nailed it right to the door. And I think it makes a big difference. Then I could install the door guide and give it two coats of Halcyon Clear Varnish from Totobo, which is the sponsor of this build. I've been using Total Boat epoxies for a lot of projects lately, but recently I had the opportunity to try their Halcyon Clear Varnish on my wood lowrider bike build. And the finish on that frame came out absolutely amazing. I wanted this finish not only to look good, but also be very durable since this is going to be on a shop door and I'm going to be banging on it with a lot of tools and other materials, I'm sure of it. And I figured if it's good enough for boat protection, it's going to work great on this door. And I was right, the finish turned out absolutely amazing. I'm going to leave a link to the varnish and their website in the description below, so make sure you guys check them out. Thank you so much for Total Boat for sponsoring this build. Now let's get back to putting on some acoustic panels and wrap this build up. I used a spray adhesive on the door and on the panels. I waited a few minutes for them to get tacky and I just stuck them right onto the door. And not only did they help with the acoustics, they look pretty darn cool. I used the utility knife to cut the panels around the windows and next was to install a temporary door handle. And with that, I think this project is done. All right guys, so the door is finally complete and these acoustic panels make a huge difference. You can actually tell how bad the audio gets once I open the door 
And then once it's closed, it cleans it up completely. So this side of the shop was a big problem for me when it came to filming. I always had to do most of my work and all the audio on the other side of the shop where I didn't have this big opening because the echo was just so bad. And now I can actually work on my workbench without having to worry about the bad acoustics. And the brush stripping that I added all the way around the door keeps the majority of the dust in the shop and not in the rest of the house. So if you guys like this video and want to see more projects like it, let me know in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification because I got some really cool projects coming up in the future. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I will see you guys next time. <laughs> you fly really good. I can tell. I got a bar door. It unfortunately doesn't silence all the noise. All right, so let's wrap this build up and put some acoustic panels on it. <laughs> <laughs>